We'll get things started today by talking about, by the way, everything I just said was true. No deception. But you know what? When you get people in your life who are full of deception, there was somebody in the business here locally that I still adore, whose penchant for telling almost everything was a tall tale, was so rampant. And But you know what? I didn't care because the guy was entertaining and still is as heck. And I love the guy. And we've been friends for a good many years. <laughs> but... I'm not sure that he could ever, you know, the, the, two plus two equals five. And let me tell you why that's important and funny. And that's what he would be about. That's one thing. But what about the pathological liar? This is something very, very different. Our good friend, John Braccio, Dr. John Braccio at drjohnb.com for all the podcasts on all the issues involving good mental health at Regional Psychological Services of East Lansing is here now. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Well, no lies good, there. Good morning. 100% good morning sincere. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> well, listen, let me begin by saying lying is a bad policy and will hurt the trust people have in you and what you say, okay? I also will add saying an ugly hat that Aunt Mabel is wearing is nice, is better than saying it is atrocious and burn it, okay? <laughs> now, the, okay. the compulsive liar is an annoyance and can destroy or greatly impair relationships, but their primary purpose is is generally self-enhancement and a long-term psychological problem of telling the truth. Their purpose is not to ruin others. It can be to get out of trouble, enhance self, or even try to please others. And I think your point is the people who doesn't matter what you've done, they've hit the ball further on the golf course, they've hit the ball further hitting it, they, yeah. they've met five more important people than you did. But that that's a little different. They can even be just entertaining. On the other hand... Exactly, exactly. Lot, yeah, right. But the pathological liar is deceitful and devious without a conscience. And that's a pretty bad set of conditions. Their purpose is to hurt others and enhance self at the expense of anyone who gets in their way, or they just choose to torment for their own pleasure. They do not need a reason to damage someone. They generally have well ingrained narcissistic or you know, self love mm -hmm. and or antisocial, meaning they, there's no sense of right or wrong. It's called traditionally the sociopath, okay? They can be quite charming, convincing, and effective. They can play the hideous behaviors often well hidden from others because they have no sense of right or wrong. And if you have no sense of right or wrong, it's quite easy to try to manipulate somebody because you're not worrying about whether it's truthful. You're trying to play on their weaknesses. And they're often masters of manipulation and intrigue when dealing with persons mm -hmm. who are honest, who are loving, and sincere. Now, if we go into the best defense, is to stay away, as have as minimal contact as possible once you identify the person. And they're there. There's no question. We've all run into them. Because they prey on your goodness, you must beware when you see the destructive behaviors of a pathological liar playing out in their interactions with others. They are at their worst when in positions of power and authority. And unfortunately, people like this are often very talented, very clever, and they're able to get into positions of power and authority. I'm not, maybe the numbers are not huge, but you'll have enough of them around that they certainly could cause havoc and destruction in the lives of a lot of people. So best to stay away from the, the pathological liar as best you can, dangerous people. William Shakespeare uh, made a career out of including them in most of his plays. I mean, there was, yes. there was, so you know what I'm saying. There was someone well, Iago, who fit. The perfect um, yeah, the in, in Othello, right? I mean, he was, yes. he, he was he, he maybe was quintessential, right? And it wasn't just self-destructive. It was, I'm going to bring all y'all down with me here and uh, we're going to, we're going to flame out. And it worked, unfortunately. Uh, but, but it's because Shakespeare had either observed or had the ability to pick up through other characters through time this same kind of uh, trait, and and it's not a it's not a um, a virtue. So you say avoid. Sometimes it's not as easy as that, though, Doc. No, I mean, to run the not. run the other direction, it can be very difficult. It could be a coworker that you don't have any choice but to see every day, and and that could be problematic. Or a family member, right? Yes, it can be a spouse, it could be a parent, it could be a cousin, mm -hmm. it could be a friend. And, you know, since you brought up Shakespeare and Iago, you know, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the great British critic, he talked about the malignancy 
of the malignancy, malignancy of the character of Iago, because for no purpose he led the death of Desdemona, of then um, Otello, not to get too much into the weeds, but people that are that destructive and just do it for the fun of it. Just They just enjoy causing havoc and not showing these emotions. And we do find them a lot in close relationships and in positions of power. I think we find in politics, we'll find them in leadership with, with, with power, governmental, with, with industrial. You, you, it's just an area where if you don't have any sense of right or wrong and you can manipulate people's feelings because you don't care, and if you enjoy doing it, okay, uh, and you're clever and you're um, able to hide things and charm people, you're a very, very dangerous um, person. And the best thing to do is stay away if you can. And if you have to interact with them, really be on guard because they're, you know, they can be very, very destructive. Because we use, we talk about narcissists, we talk about sociopaths, mm. and but we don't realize yeah. how destructive people, those personality disorders can, can be. They're very dangerous. All right, now, so this is all the good advice for, you know, Mr. and Mrs. or Miss, a young person, um, avoid. Now, let's say somebody's driving around right now and they're listening to this and they're going, you know, I'm I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to be honest with myself that they're describing me here. But I don't want to be like this. Do you do you think people who roll down this path that there's a reclamation project for them? Have you worked with those who are pathological liars and brought them into the realm of truth telling and not weaving webs to deceive? I have only in the sense that Sometimes you'll get a person who really decides they want to work on their moral development, okay, that they've had some crashing relationships, and they're willing to take a look at themselves. Not that they can fully come back, because if you really have no conscience and you've grown up that way, it's not like you can just all of a sudden see right and wrong, Dave. On the other hand, I believe anybody can change if they really, if they really want to, but it's hard if you're that way, a, a thing to do for some persons is not to do it. Meaning, if they if they have the ability and they can do it, and because they don't have a sense of right or wrong, they just determine that they're not going to. Okay. Now that may sound a little odd. To you. There are some people that just they don't have that. They don't have the grounding. Everything is um, in flux. Right is what I want now. Right is what I determine. I enjoy manipulating, having someone fall in love with me, having sure. someone work for me and idolize me. Um, but yes, people can change, but that's a hard one. Personality disorders are very ingrained. So if you get a narcissist or an antisocial personality disorder, you know, which also are called sociopaths or psychopaths, those are hard people to really change because they're ingrained patterns. But yes, People can change, but that, that those people often will choose not to do bad for whatever the reason or stay out of it just because they determine it doesn't work, it's a bad thing to do, it doesn't work for them, often more than because they determine it's the wrong thing to do because they, they have that damaged um, sense of right sure. or wrong. Again, I always, want, I always want to be positive. If people no, but the, the, sense, you describe that to. so... As you, is your want, you describe that so professionally. And to me, when I look at it, because I'm not the professional you are, I would just say this, Doc, I believe in the concept of people changing, but in actually changing their stripes, I, I hold a lot less belief. How's that? <laughs> I mean, I, well, I, 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 so I I'm, I'm kind of with you that way, but you're more optimistic about it uh, than I am. Well, I, I appreciate that. God love you. But I mean, <laughs> you know. No. Now, the compulsive liar, they can change, but this is the guy. He, they're often entertaining. You know, they have, they have great stories. Exactly. You know, they'll show, oh. they'll show the number of sharks they've covered, the number of races <laughs> they've won, the intricate things that they can do that no one else can do. But they're wonderful. They're, they can be entertaining, and they know the line, on the, even if they're compulsive at it, but they're – there, that's another, but that's an entertaining, if not. That's very what I was annoying. saying. The person I was describing is absolutely. A, at some point, I said it's all a bunch of BS, and then I said, you know what? But I don't even care anymore because this is, you know, I like being around him. He's just funny, and he's, you know, right. he he fills those little lulls in life that we all know about, 
and there can never be a dull moment. And we know people like that. We also all know yes. people like that. And actually, that's not such a bad thing. I mean, you know, no, the world needs no. some clowns and entertainers, too. And, you know, I, I kind of like that. But you, you, the one is very different. Than They're the other. very and, different from the other. And yeah. if you're really not sharp or you're susceptible to yeah. words and comments and and looks and things, you really do run the risk of running into very, very destructive people and often stay with them for years. Like the narcissist, everything, you know, the sun comes up in the morning so they have light, goes down at night so they can sleep. Mm-hmm. You know, what else would be the purpose of the sun? Okay. I mean, when you get, <laughs> when you see the world that way, you can see that these can be destructive people. Uh, And then when you add on top of that, a real pathological desire to hurt people, take advantage of people and do wrong. Um, And those are, those are just uh, bad people. And there are, there are some, you know, as much as we want to say that, that all people can be loved and need to be loved. And maybe all of this is true, but there are, there is a certain percent of people that have just um, never got on the Maslow, um, you know, well, the whole list of, of growth, mm-hmm. okay? They're kind of stuck in some negative phase of self-interest and could care less about others and have the, quote, malignancy that Coleridge sure. talked about in terms of the ago yeah. that it could be for, for anyone. And we know them. We know them. We've seen them. Best to stay away from them and beware. Beware of, you know, you know be, just be aware of what you're doing. Caveat emptor, you know, you want to be, you want to be aware of what you're what you're doing, the relationships you get into. And yeah. because they're so charming and because there's so many really lonely people and, just, and people drawn in. wanting yeah. to believe certain right. things, they, they draw them in, take advantage of them, and then sometimes just almost mercifully, they throw them out and they're only doing it because they move down to a bigger, bigger target or something else. They bore of it, but that doesn't um, help the person who's destroyed no. and devastated along Pathological the way. liars. They are, um, it, it's forewarned is forearmed. Uh, Regional yes. Psychological Services in East Lansing, the good doctor, Dr. John Braccio, and uh, Dr. John B, letter B.com. That's the place for all the podcasts. Uh, we always appreciate having you, and that is the truth. Take care. Stay safe, Doc. We'll talk again soon. Okay, my friend. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. We're back in a moment. 1320 WILS. 